This is the Be Quiet Light Loop All-in-One Liquid Cooler. I think it goes without saying, the primary focus on this one is going to be the lighting effects. The entire water block has been designed to function as one big giant light diffuser. It lets all that bright ARGB shine through everywhere. In this video, I'm going to take you through the unboxing, go over all the different specs and features, show you how to install it, and then take a look at what kind of performance it can deliver. We've got the standard AIO package here. We're greeted with some paperwork. This is a multilingual user manual that you can use to help with the installation process if you don't feel like watching that part of the video. We have three 120 millimeter Lightwings LX ARGB fans. It's three because this is the 360 millimeter model. Without the lights on, these are pretty plain looking. There's no flashy branding or decorative materials, just plain black fans with white blades. Spec wise, they max out at 2100 RPM and can move air up to about 62 cubic feet per minute. Static pressure is decent at 2.51 millimeters H2O and noise levels top out at about 31 decibels. This package has all your mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD, and there's a small little tube of thermal paste in there as well. Looks like enough for maybe two or three applications. This one's just some more hardware, and you can see there's some long screws in there that are gonna connect the fans to the radiator. This is the ARGB PWM control hub. This lets you connect up to six fans, which means there's gonna be some extra ports available after we set up our three fans, so you're gonna be able to add more stuff to your system and get it all synced up through this one single hub. To get the hub installed, you're gonna need a PWM header, a three pin ARGB header, and a SATA power cable. Now this here is kinda of interesting. You don't see this on a lot of AIOs. Be Quiet ships the light loop with some extra coolant because the radiator's refillable. It comes pre-filled from the factory, so don't go panicking thinking you gotta fill it up yourself before using it. This is just to top up the system as coolant evaporates over time. The manual says to top it up after two years of use, so it's really not something you're gonna have to be doing all the time. And I think the idea here is that you can extend the lifespan of the AIO by keeping that coolant level up. Here's the radiator and water block. You can see the unique design on the top cap. It's a light diffuser, so its job is to spread light out over a wide area and also soften it so it's less harsh looking. It's a pretty cool idea for a water pump block. It's a nice alternative to the typical light up logo designs that you see on a lot of AIOs. The radiator measures 397 millimeters long and it's 27 millimeters thick. It's an all aluminum design and it's got a bit of a pattern on the sides. I like it, I think it looks nicer than the plain smooth sides that you see on others. And if we flip this thing over here, that's the fill port right there for the coolant. It's really small and subtle and it kind of just blends into the overall build. And then when it's time to top up, you just open it, shoot some coolant in there, close it back up and forget about it. It's got some nice thick tubes with solid connections at both the water block and at the radiator. I'd like to check that on AIOs to make sure everything feels nice and snug, especially at the water block because there's movement happening there when you start to bend the hoses around. When you're dealing with liquid and electronics, you really can't afford to have any issues. So that's why I always like to check that. And with this one, there's no issues at all from what I can tell. This water block's made from nickel plated copper. And notice it doesn't have any thermal paste pre-applied. A lot of AIOs come with a pre-application so they're ready to drop onto the CPU right out of the box. But with this one, you're gonna need to apply your own thermal paste on there yourself. That's okay, cause it's not hard to do. And like I mentioned during the unboxing, they did include a little tube of thermal paste in the package. I'm installing the light loop on this open air test bench that's running an Intel Core i7 13700K on socket LGA1700. It's a Raptor Lake CPU, and if you're familiar with that processor family, then you know it is really not easy to cool, and I think that makes it perfect for testing coolers. To get the AIO installed, the first thing we're gonna do is get our Intel backplate all set up and ready to go. We need to take these little posts and insert them one by one into the bracket, and then you just push these little rubber O-rings on there to hold them into place. The positioning does matter depending on which socket you're working with. For LGA 1700, I have to use the outermost spot towards the end because it's a wide-fitting socket. Once we have all our posts on there, we can line it up with the holes on the board and it should slide right in, just like that. Now back on the other side, we have to take these standoff screws and thread them onto each of the four posts that are now sticking up around the CPU socket. I like to get these threaded on by hand and then just tighten each one down with a screwdriver to make sure it's nice and tight and snug. Next, we have to install these brackets onto the standoffs and these are what's gonna hold the water block down onto the CPU. They attach on here, one above and one below the CPU socket. The mounting holes have different positions to accommodate different sockets, and again, I'm using the widest option for LGA1700, but if you're on a different socket, just check the manual for the correct positioning. And these just get secured on there with two screws each. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the fans installed on the radiator before I mount anything, cause this is just always easier to do before the cooler's installed in the case. I'm mounting the fans in a push configuration, meaning it's gonna push air through the radiator fins as opposed to pulling it through the other side. When you're mounting your fans, you should pay attention to where the wires are gonna end up, otherwise you might have a weird situation with cables in your build. Just make sure they're gonna end up in a position where they can easily pass through a cutout or a routing point in your case. 
Each fan gets screwed down to the radiator with four screws, and I'm using an electric screwdriver here to save time. If you plan to do the same, just make sure you don't use something with too much torque because you could end up cracking the fan casing. All right, now we can take the radiator and get it installed into the case. There's 12 mounting points on the radiator, but I'm only gonna use four because this is my test bench and the cooler's not gonna live on here long term. But if this is a permanent installation for you, feel free to go nuts with the screws. Okay, now let's get the water block on here. Since we don't have any pre-applied thermal paste, we're gonna start by applying our own. I'm gonna take that little tube that came in the box and just apply a small straight line right onto the IHS. If you want a more detailed tutorial about how to apply thermal paste, just check the description. I'll link a video for you down there. Now before you go slapping the water block on there, make sure you remove the plastic protective cover from the cold plate. If you forget that, you're gonna run into some trouble later. With the plastic removed, this just gets lowered down onto the CPU. Line up the holes in the bracket with the screws on either side of the block, and then it's just a matter of screwing it down tight. I recommend alternating back and forth between the two screws to help evenly distribute the pressure and spread the thermal paste. Just do a few turns at a time on each side until everything's tight. Now for the not so fun part, we have to install the hub and connect a whole bunch of wires. If you look at the hub, you can see all these ports for the fans and ARGB. They alternate one and then the other along both sides. We need to take each of our fans and plug all the cables in. Pretty straightforward and simple, right? Now here's where it gets a little tricky. There's a separate port at the top right here. It's labeled RPM. Take a PWM cable from one of the fans and plug it in there instead of onto the sides with the other two fans. What this is gonna do is take the RPM signal from the fan and pass it through to the motherboard. This way the hub and motherboard can communicate and automatically adjust the fan speeds. On the other end of the hub, we have three cables. Plug the PWM connector into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Now take the ARGB cable and plug that into an open three pin ARGB header. And finally, take this SATA connector and connect it to your power supply with an available SATA power cable. Now we still have two more cables to deal with coming from the water block. Take the PWM connector and plug it into the AIO pump header on your motherboard. It's usually near or even right beside the CPU fan. Then take the ARGB cable and feed it through to the back of the case and plug it into the hub. You can also plug this directly into another open ARGB header on your motherboard, but I like to keep everything simple and on the same hub all in one place. That's it, turn on the PC and get ready for the light show. The one downside to AIOs like this is that they add a ton of wires to your system. You've got six wires coming from the fans, three more coming from the hub, and then two more coming from the water block. That's a lot to deal with. You can kind of mount the hub somewhere in your case and try and push all the wires behind something or tie them to the motherboard tray, but it's still a lot of wires to deal with any way you look at it. So it is what it is. But with all that said, you're rewarded with one epic light show. The ARGB on this thing is super bright and I really do like that diffused look on the water block. I know LCD screens are the big thing on AIOs lately, but I think pushing raw lighting effects like this can still look really good in your build. Be Quiet doesn't have any proprietary software for the cooler, it just works with your motherboard's lighting control system. This one's ASUS Aura Sync. I can sync up the water block, the fans, and the RAM all together and pick from some of the preset effects on here. Everything works perfectly as it should and there's no noticeable lag or delay when applying a new setting. It's all really quick and responsive. Now for the performance testing. Starting things off here with Cinebench R23. Keep in mind, this is more of a CPU stress test than a benchmark, which makes it great for cooler testing. This is a 10 minute straight multi-core test run, applying full load to the 13700K. I locked the pump speed at 100% for all the tests and then varied the fan speeds from 25% to 100%. Even at 25%, it managed to keep the 13700K away from temperatures that might trigger thermal throttling, which is obviously good. System noise levels look pretty good here, right across the range from 25 to 100% fan speed. This test involves exporting a five minute 4K video in DaVinci Resolve to see the cooling performance under productivity workloads. Results look similar to the last test. Temperatures are looking good, never triggering any thermal throttling, and the system stays relatively quiet until the fans get up towards their top speed. And here's a custom run of 3D Mark Time Spy running at 1080p resolution to simulate a gaming workload. The maximum temperature at the slowest fan speed was only 50C, so this cooler should be plenty powerful enough to handle gaming. And it can do that while being very quiet. You can see from these numbers, there's no reason to run high fan speeds in this type of workload. And hey, maybe that extra quiet will help you hear footsteps and other small details in your game. One more quick note on sound. The pump in this thing is unbelievably quiet. I think it's the quietest I've ever experienced on an AIO. 
I took the fan speeds all the way down and then put my ear up to it so I could hear what it sounded like. And it's like barely audible unless my ear is almost touching it. And even then all I hear is like this really low pitched humming sound. I don't know what Be Quiet did with the design here, but it's noticeable in a good way. Overall, the light loop looks like another awesome cooler from Be Quiet. Its unique looking design offers up some seriously bright and eye-catching lighting effects. If lighting's important to you just as much or more than cooling performance, then the light loop's definitely worth looking at. Purchasing links, full specs, and details, all that stuff down in the description. Make sure you check it out if you're interested. Get subscribed on your way out, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.